You cannot trust most Red Komodo first impression and review video. Let me start off by saying this. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I don't have a relationship with Red whatsoever. This video is created after owning a Red Komodo and going back to look at some of the reviews that almost caused me not to buy this camera. But first, drop the intro. My name is Ty, this is Flash Film Academy. This is the channel you subscribe to when you're ready to go from passion to profit. Now I own a red Komodo and I almost didn't buy a red Komodo because I was watching reviews that I seen on YouTube. And to understand why I don't trust a lot of Komodo reviews or first impression videos, we first have to understand what a cinema camera is. And if you watch this channel, you know I keep it 100. So listen, there is no true definition of a modern day cinema camera. Don't believe me? Go look it up. If you look it up, you'll find something along the lines of a camera used to shoot movies. Well, you can shoot movies with an iPhone these days. Camera manufacturers use this term to help sell high-end cameras. In my opinion, a true cinema camera places three things above everything else in this particular order. Number one is image quality above everything else. These cameras are designed to provide you with everything the sensor captures internally. Compression is an afterthought to image quality. A lot of you are hung up on resolution, but when you truly want to shoot cinema quality, you'd be more concerned with the amount of data your camera can capture per frame and focus on more things like bit depth and dynamic range. An Alexa Mini shoots about 3.2K and your best 8K mirrorless camera can't come close to the image quality it provides. Saying that you have an 8K camera is like saying that you have a V8 in your car. Just because it's big don't mean it's fast. Remember back in the 80s when cars used to come with 305s? Those V8s were slow gas guzzlers. But people claim, I got a V8. Yeah, okay. Real cinema cameras that put image quality first usually require some type of calibration, black shading, or need the sensor to reach a certain temperature to provide peak performance every time you use it. High-end cinema cameras like the Arri Alexa have heating and cooling elements built into the camera to keep the sensor at the correct temperature needed to provide the best image quality. Number two is reliability and durability. Real cinema cameras need to be durable and dependable. You won't find flimsy, flippy screens or plastic bodies. They're made out of aluminum alloy or other hard materials designed to survive the elements and take a serious beating. To do that, they need to use dependable high-end media and connections. Rarely will you find SD cards and HDMI ports on a real cinema camera. Not only do cinema cameras need physical dependability, the operating system and software needs to be just as reliable. These cameras are like super duty pickup trucks for your business. Last but not least, they are modular. Real cinema cameras offer flexibility both with hardware and with software. Think about it, RAW is flexibility in the form of data. As far as hardware, it needs to be designed to fit and go any place it's needed. Trust me, as you move up in your ability to buy cameras, you'll understand that there is a big difference between cameras that can be rigged and cameras designed to be rigged. There are plenty other things to mention like time code, SDI, outputs, PL mount, jam sync, the list goes on. Listen, I'm not trying to knock other cameras because we live in a time where you can create cinematic content with any camera with the proper understanding of lighting, camera movement, and composition. But let me talk about why most Komodo reviews are trash. Due to it being an affordable entry-level camera from RED, it has attracted a bunch of DSLR mirrorless shooters who always wanted a RED, including myself. The reason why their reviews can't really be trusted is most of these reviews come from people who have never shot on a RED or have not owned a RED camera. They may have filmmaking experience, however, they don't truly understand how this camera works. 
When I say that, I'm specifically speaking to how to get the best image quality possible out of this device. See, a lot of DSLR and mirrorless users expose the image to capture the best in-camera image as possible. And that's great for cameras that provide you with baked in codecs and files. However, this camera is designed to capture as much data as possible, providing you with maximum flexibility to push and pull what you want in post. This throws off a lot of mirrorless shooters. And to be honest, it threw me off too for some time. DSLR shooters rely on light meters, histogram, and things like false color to help them capture what they see. They're worried about things like native ISO and getting the correct white balance. But reds don't quite work like that. Don't get me wrong, white balance and ISO plays a part in capturing the best image possible, but nowhere near as much as it does in mirrorless cameras. To simplify it, the biggest difference is red camera uses tools called goal posts and traffic lights. These are designed to help make sure you don't clip your highlights or go too deep in your shadows. This allows you to capture as much data as possible within the dynamic range of the sensor so that you'll have maximum flexibility in post. Now, without getting too technical, typically there are two types of tools provided by RED to capture the proper exposure, RAW and IRE based tools. Raw tools are designed to help you capture as much data from the scene as possible. Even if your eye can't see what's on the shadows in the monitor, if the raw tools say it's okay, it's okay. IRE tools like histogram, zebras, simply represent the image on the screen. It accounts for how the image is being displayed for monitoring. So images that look clipped may not be clipped. So think about this for a second. If you come from using mirrorless cameras and you use a red with the idea of just capturing the best image your eye can see, you are from the world of relying on IRE tools. You won't have the ability to fully maximize the capabilities of the red camera and its raw format R3D. It took me about six to eight months to really grasp the idea of capturing data and not just an image. I, like most mirrorless shooters, who decided to rent this camera for the weekend was approaching the idea of capturing an image the same way I would with my A7S III. Don't get me wrong, these cameras are not harder to work with, they just require a different approach. An example I like to use for my After Effects users, it's like you're going from layers to nodes. You just have to think about it differently. Now let me be real with you, before I fully understood this, I almost sold my Red Komodo. I felt like they were all hype and I felt dumb for spending all this money falling for the red name when I could have had a camera like a C70 with autofocus that only took SD cards. Because with those cameras, I'm used to trusting what my eyes see using tools like histogram or false colors to get it right in camera. It took me time to understand the tools provided by red and how they were designed to help you capture as much data in the highlights, midtones, and shadows as possible. So you can take that data back home and push and pull that data to create the image you want. Keep in mind, a real cinema camera main objective is to make sure you have a lot to play with in post. So as a new RED owner, I had to shake the idea of only pleasing my eyes and work on becoming more technical with the investment that I made by starting to learn how to focus on capturing enough data to work with later. This is extremely important because I see so many reviews from people who've rented the camera or just bought it trying to compare it to the C70 or the A7S III. However, because they're thinking like a DSLR shooter, they're never truly capable of getting maximum quality out of this camera. And often they present you all with a review that make it seem like the C70 or the FX3 offers comparable image quality to the Red Komodo. Let me tell you straight up, when you understand how to use this camera correctly, it's not even close. The A7S3 excels in a lot of other creature comforts like autofocus and fast frame rates and the ability to have cute little compressed files that fit on your SD card. Yeah, you do have raw capabilities with ProRes RAW, but it's not real raw, not yet. It is in the sense that it offers more flexibility in post, but it's nowhere near what Red's R3D offers in my opinion. 
B-Raw may be closer, but even it provides half of what R3D provides. And that's coming from a guy who owns two A7S3s, two Atomist recorders, and I've recently owned three Black Magics, including an Ursa Mini. It's a great selling feature, but it's not R3D. There's a reason that Red has a patent on RAW. Now it took about six months of just immersing myself in the Red world for me to understand that mirrorless cameras capture images. True cinema camera capture data. The way you go about capturing that data is different than just capturing an image. Now let me say this, if you're not looking to get that technical, you're not ready for a real cinema camera. You don't shoot it, edit it, and upload it with these cameras. The look and feel requires attention. Trust me, don't get a cinema camera and then start the color grade. Practice with the camera you have now. When you get good at color correcting and color grading, you will outgrow 8-bit and even 10-bit footage. Then it's time to upgrade to a raw file. I feel like everybody wanna shoot in raw. Nobody wanna learn how to properly correct and grade that image. Don't get me wrong, you can always just slap a LUT on it, but you don't buy a cinema camera to just slap a LUT on it. That's the equivalent of buying a high-end oven to cook TV dinners. And if that's who you are, fine. Just stick with an A7S III or a C70. Cinema cameras are for the ultimate artists that want full control of their image. So next time you see a review on the Red Komodo, keep this in mind. If you're looking for a good book to help you better understand how Red captures data, check out the rules of engagement or check out videos from real Red users like Justin Phillips. He has a great video explaining how to shoot with the Red. Even though you don't like me, Carlos Quintero also has a great video about properly exposing with the Komodo. I'll post links to both in the description. I was so close to selling my camera, but once I learned how to properly use this camera, I finally got why people spend so much money on Reds. I fell in love with this camera so much that I went out and bought a second one. So just make sure that if you're ready to make this leap, you're ready to learn. I made a post in a few Komodo user groups asking new RED users, what are some things that you had to relearn to get the most out of your RED? And over and over again, people talked about learning how to expose their image with the idea of capturing data. Some said it felt backwards coming from a mirrorless camera, especially when you don't put as much value on ISO and white balance as you would with any other camera. Many talked about learning to trust traffic lights. However, once you do, you will unlock the true capabilities of the Komodo. You'll understand why Red is one of the most trusted brands in cinema. I see so many videos with people who sold their camera and they didn't take time to learn it. There's a reason why you have yet to see a review video from me about this camera. I'm still learning about it and loving it every day, even in 2022. Anyway, as always, be inspired, be creative, be profitable.